Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we'll learn how to format a micro SD card for use with a 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to learn how to format a micro SD card for a 3D printer, and I'll show both the Mac and the Windows way. So this is a little bit different from my usual videos about 3D printing, but the reason I'm making this video is that I've been doing a lot of other videos about upgrading to editing and compiling and otherwise installing and using the Gyres UI Marlin firmware on certain Creality printers. I refer, of course, almost exclusively to the Ender 3 V2 because Gyres UI is designed specifically to work with that printer's color LCD screen. But I think that any 3D printer using a Creality version 422 or 427 mainboard and the Ender 3 V2's screen is a candidate for the Gyres UI upgrade. In fact, I did this recently with an Ender 3 Max, turning it into what I called an Ender 3 Max V2 Pro. But one of the things that crops up in the comments on these videos is that occasionally people have trouble convincing their printer to read the firmware file from the card in order to update itself. However, comments from people who have trouble updating the firmware on the LCD screen are far more numerous. And I believe this is because the LCD is really a tiny computer and it is very picky about the capacity and format of the cards it can read. For both mainboard and screen firmware updates, the solution seems to be use a card that's 8GB or less, formatted as FAT32, with 4K or 4096 byte allocation units. Okay, but how do you actually do that? Well, that's what I'm here to show you today. I'll show you how to do that on Windows, and I'll show you how to do that on a Mac. First, let's do this on Windows. Oh, pro tip, use the chapter markers here on YouTube if you want to skip ahead to the Mac version. So this is Windows 10, shown here running in a virtual machine. I'll insert the 8GB microSD card that came with my printer into a card reader connected to the computer, and then it shows up here as Drive F. Right-click it and select Format. Here you can see that the card's capacity is 7.39 gigabytes. The default option for the file system is FAT32. There are other options, but FAT32 is what we want. And the allocation unit size is set to 4096 bytes. There are other values available, but 4096 bytes is what's needed. The volume label is the name of the card, and these always seem to be set to no name. I like setting them to the name of the printer if I can, so I'll set this a little less generically to Ender 3. Last, there's the option to perform a quick format. It may be okay to leave that checked, but if you use the quick format option and your printer or its screen still don't like your card, you may need to re-reformat with the quick format option unchecked. Since I want to eliminate the possibility of quick format being a problem, I'm going to uncheck the option. And then I'll click the Start button. A warning appears to let us know that formatting the card erases its contents. If there's anything on the card you want to keep, click Cancel and copy those files into a folder on your desktop. I don't have anything important on this card, so I'm going to click the OK button. This progress bar shows the progress of the formatting process. Since I'm using the non-quick format option, this process is non-quick. In fact, this took about 20 minutes to complete. It's definitely one of those go do something else for a while, grab a Snickers bar kind of things. But eventually a dialog box reveals to us that the passage of time has brought satisfaction and the formatting process is complete. And I'm okay with that. So I'll click the OK button and then I'll close the format window. Now the card is properly formatted for firmware upgrades on your 3D printer. Okay, Windows people, you're done, but before you go, maybe give the video a like and maybe also subscribe. Okay, cool. See you later. Now let's do this on a Mac. I'll insert the 8GB micro SD card that came with my printer into a card reader connected to the computer, and then it shows up on the desktop as no name. And that's not because it doesn't have a name. It does have a name. Its name is no name. Sort of like those pages you sometimes see that say, this page intentionally left blank. The page isn't blank, it has words on it, but 
the words say that the page is blank. Weird. Well, anyway, getting back to the subject, all disk formatting operations on a Mac are handled by Disk Utility. You can get there from the Finder by clicking the Go menu, then selecting Utilities, which opens the Utilities folder. Double-click the Disk Utility icon in there. Disk Utility lists available volumes in the sidebar on the left side of its window. These are grouped into internal and external categories. The microSD card named No Name is in the external category. Pro tip, if you have any other external disks connected to your Mac, you might want to eject them and physically unplug them from the computer so you don't accidentally format them. And don't mess with anything in the internal category. This is where your computer's hard drive lives. It's probably best to just close up that category entirely. Disk Utility's standard view shows you the volumes, not the actual devices the volumes reside on. We need to target the microSD card device to ensure it has the correct format, so we need to tell Disk Utility to show us that information. Click View and select Show All Devices. You'll see a bit of a change in the sidebar. For one, Disk Utility had additional information to show in the internal category, so it expanded it again. So I'll close it up again. Now, in the external list, you'll see that the volume named No Name resides on a thing called Generic Mass Storage Class Media. That is the thing we need to format. So click on that in the list. Now, Disk Utility shows us a bunch of information about this device. We can see that its capacity is 7.95 gigabytes. It's located externally to the computer, connected via USB, and it has a master boot record partition type. Since we're here to erase and reformat this card, click Erase here on the toolbar. And just a quick reminder, Erase means whatever's on the card right now won't be on it when this process is complete. If there's anything on the card you want to save, drag those files into a folder on your desktop. Disk Utility will prompt for three things. I'm going to approach these in reverse order. First, set the partition scheme, which needs to be master boot record. Second, we need Disk Utility to format the card as FAT32, so set Format to MS-DOS FAT. And third, Disk Utility wants a name for this, so we'll set that to something short. I like to name the cards for the printers they go with when I can, so I'll call this Ender3. Disk Utility is forcing this to all caps, by the way. With all of that set, click the Erase button. Disk Utility shows the details of what it did, and here you can see that it chose to use 4,096 bytes per cluster, which corresponds to the 4K or 4,096 byte allocation units that this needs to be formatted with. Disk Utility chose that value automatically, and I don't have any control over it, but I think that's a pretty standard value for an 8 gigabyte card. Plus, every time I've used Disk Utility to format these 8 gigabyte cards for firmware upgrades, they've worked. Anyway, click the Done button and then close Disk Utilities window. Now the card is properly formatted for firmware upgrades on your 3D printer. So there you go. Now you've got both Mac and Windows instructions to help you format memory cards for use with your 3D printer. If you've been having trouble, hopefully this quick little guide will help. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.